Okay, are we on? <laughs> You're good. You're live. Okay. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning to you. Good morning to you, Jaden. And good morning to all of you out there on my virtual storytime rug. I'm Miss Deersha, and I am your storyteller here at Story and Song. Let's get started with story time. Welcome to story time at our store. We're so glad you came to read and explore. Now open your eyes and turn up those ears because you never know who or what will appear good morning i am so excited this morning to welcome all of you to a very special story time event with two very special story time guests i have with me this morning the wonderful i i just can't say enough <laughs> Uh, Dr. Janetta Betch Cole, and uh, she's the author of the book that we're going to do this morning, as well as the illustrator, Miss Nelda Latif, and they are going to share with us their beautiful book that they've written uh, called African Proverbs for All Ages. Welcome, Miss Nelda and Dr. Cole. I am so happy to have you here this morning. Thank you is my response. And I wish if I had a magic wand <laughs> that I could have you, my dear sister, start every one of my mornings. <laughs> because your energy, your enthusiasm, your, and I'm going to put pips on it, your natural abilities as a teacher as a lifelong learner they are just all contagious <laughs> so thank you for letting us be a part of your special time and i do want to say before i turn it over to my dear sister friend and colleague nelda latif i do want to say that this is super special for me because I live right where story and song is. I live in Bernardina Beach, Florida. <laughs> so Nelda, why don't you get us going? Terrific. Thank you so much for that one. We're, hi, everyone. Thank you for that lovely introduction and my esteemed co-author Dr. Janetta Betch Cole and I are delighted to be joining you virtually at the Story and Song Neighborhood Bookstore. Uh, we are so thrilled that a review of the book appeared yesterday in a New York Times feature entitled Holiday Gift Books for Children and it beautifully describes our book. So permit me to read it to you. A, it's a book devoted to wise old sayings and aphorisms sounds luxury, but fear not, this ingeniously designed volume is as engaging as a game, one that becomes more rewarding with each round of play. Here's the setup. Each spread shows a scene of daily life in Africa, from a boy chasing antelope by a river to a nest of hatching ostrich chicks. The authors provide four traditional proverbs labeled A, B, C, and D. And it's up to readers to pick which one they think best narrates the illustration. The scene of the antelope, for instance, could be depicting any of these sayings. Hurry, hurry has no blessings. You can't chase two antelopes at once. Dance in the sun, but turn your back to the clouds. A roaring lion kills no game. Clearly, there are no right answers, a concept that may itself be eye-opening for children. This is a book that sparks conversation. The proverbs were drawn from more than 25 African countries by Dr. Cole, a noted anthropologist and former director of the Smithsonian National Museum of African Art, and Latif, who also provides the bright textured collage-like illustrations. As Dr. Cole puts it, 
A proverb is a short sentence based on long experience. Whether you are young or old, proverbs can open your mind to a whole new way of seeing the world. So we are thrilled with the New York Times putting that in there. Wow, that is wonderful. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So I often think that the very idea of an origin story is important. For many people around the world, there is an explanation of how the world began. Well, every book has an origin story too. And so I think it would be wonderful if my co-collaborator, award-winning illustrator, Nelda Latif would do the origin story of African proverbs. I would be all delighted. ages. <laughs> For all ages. Well, this book came about through sheer serendipity. Uh, the proverbs were the inspiration for a magical carpet ride. The day Dr. Janetta Betch Cole and I decided to co-author this book is up there among my favorite days. Uh, my picture, my children's picture book, Animal Village, inspired by West African oral tradition had just been published. And Dr. Cole had graciously agreed to write an endorsement for the book cover. To thank her, I called upon her uh, when she was the director of the, uh, the Smithsonian's National Museum of African Art to present her with, an, uh, with a copy of the book. And to our great delight, over a cup of tea, we discovered that we shared a mutual love and admiration for African proverbs. And on the spot, we decided to collaborate on a children's book. We agreed to pull our proverbs together and I would do the illustrations and Dr. Cole would write the introduction, the prologue. Yeah. And Dr. Cole's vast knowledge and grasp of, of the power of African proverbs and her keen eye and genuine appreciation for the visual narrations I created were the driving force behind this book. And rarely did we deviate from our schedule uh, of meetings. And it was, we are so thrilled that our book is right now in your hands. So, Shouldn't we start to share some proverbs? And I would only say that everyone in this circle of listening and learning and growing already knows what a proverb is. You've heard your parents probably say one, but an easy definition we've already shared with you. Very few words based on lots of experience. Mm. Proverbs teach us, but they also inspire us. And I was thinking this morning when I acknowledge that I'm late getting something done, I could almost hear my mom's words saying, mm, okay, better late than never. <laughs> so each of you, the youngsters who are there in story and song, please think about the proverbs you already know. And Nelda Latif and I want to encourage you to begin to write your own Proverbs. So shall we share some? Let's begin. How should we do this? Nelda, what do you suggest? I am uh, going to share it. Here we go. And Good, you're going to share it? Okay. And I, Dr. Cole, you begin. Oh, here I begin. Look at this illustration. I can't read without saying Yes, I do have favorites in the book. And this is one of my favorites. Look at those two children. Yes, with different colors of skin, but clearly they are real friends. So the Proverbs, 
There can be no peace without understanding. A friend is someone you share the path with. You always learn a lot more when you lose than when you win. And there are no shortcuts to the top of the palm tree. Which one do you think, which of these proverbs, which one do you think best connects with this illustration? Nelda? Do I get to answer that one? Anyone ready to answer? Day. 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 <laughs> See, I actually like, for some reason, the one that jumps out at me is a friend is someone you share the path with. And I love that they have on one of each sock. <laughs> yeah. And that one is the one that Nelda and I think best describes this illustration. But remember, youngsters, there is no right and a wrong answer. It's what you think. And so much of learning should not be viewed as, well, that's wrong, or this is right. We want you to build the courage to say, my experience, my perspective says, this is the best proverb for this illustration. Now, why don't we move on and you go to the next one. Okay, let's do the next one. Uh. This one happens to be one of my favorites, but they're all my favorites, but <laughs> um, this is a scene of, uh, of women and children carrying water. And uh, I will begin with the, with the four proverbs. A, when the leg does not walk, the stomach does not eat. B, a village without elders is like a well without water. C, a clear conscience makes a soft pillow. And D, only once you have carried your own water will you learn the value of every drop. And this particular scene is something that you often see in the countryside uh, in Africa. And you see these women and children carrying their water buckets, heavy buckets of water over long distances under a very warm, hot sun. And uh, I, I was trying to capture uh, their strength and their beauty and their perseverance and determination. And the young girl in the foreground over here with, with her two uh, canisters of water, uh, I think she is looking at us and telling us only once you have carried your own water will you learn the value of every drop. And I think it's particularly moving, especially when you turn on the spigot and you get running water and, and, um, and then you think that clearly one third of the world's population does not have running water. So which one do you think it is? A, B, C, or D? I think I answered it. <laughs> I think I think you gave it away for us. Let's move on. So we no, let's do the next on. one. Let's do the next one. Oh, look at those colors. Nelda, I don't know where your gift comes from, but I'm sure glad you got it. All right. Look at this absolutely breathtakingly beautiful image. And then listen to these proverbs. A lamp is not valued in the afternoon, but it is valued at night. Does that describe this illustration best? Or how about this? Wisdom is like a boba tree. No individual can embrace it. See, 
one who is carried on another's back does not appreciate how far off the town is. And D, a family. A family is like a tree. It can bend, but it cannot break. Is there a youngster there who would like to say which one he or she likes? Is it A, B, C, or D? A, B, C, or D. What did I hear? He says D. D. So <laughs> tell us. Tell us about your family. Is your family like a tree? It can bend, but it cannot break? He says yes. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. So I did get it. I thought that might be why you chose it. Because <laughs> you are so fortunate to have a special family. Well, that is as good an answer as you can have. We happen, Melda and I, to think that perhaps the illustration that captures what we were thinking is this. Wisdom. Wisdom is like a baoba tree. No one individual can embrace it. And as you see the African folk around this tree, even though they are around it, they really cannot embrace it. It's simply too big. That's what wisdom is like. That's what learning is all about. You can, you can have a lot of wisdom and so can I, but neither of us can have all of the wisdom in the world. So I think what Nelda and I are saying here with this proverb is we need to share what we know. Shall we go to the next one? There we go. Okay. Now this here is a scene. Um, I sort of was capturing the ambiance of Timbuktu, which I had just visited, which I had visited as a child. And um, it was, what do I, the architecture, which is sort of made of mud and uh, it, and the, and the street and the roads are all covered in sand, but it was a center of knowledge. Uh, and uh, so that's why you have the wise men, the scholars in the foreground. And so there are four proverbs here. Let us begin. A is that traveling leaves you speechless then turns you into a storyteller. B, the same sun that melts the wax hardens the clay. C, to one who does not know a small garden is a forest. Or D, life is like a shadow and a mist. It passes quickly by and is no more. I'll give you a hint over here. I have this young boy is a tourist and he is obviously traveling. And I think when he gets home, he is go after being speechless from, he is going to have lots of stories to tell. I have to say, I liked that one myself. I think the story part <laughs> really resonated with me. I think it's your experience, you know, in life too. So the fact that it says traveling leaves you speechless, which it does. I mean, you're just awed by what you're seeing and then you have to come and tell about it. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay. Let's move to the next one. Since we've, okay, next one. Now this is the image that Nelda read about in the New York Times article. But look at the colors. Look at the movement. Look at the rhythm of the antelope. Well, which proverb does indeed capture this extraordinary illustration? Hurry, hurry has no blessings. B. 
You can't chase two antelopes at once. See, dance in the sun, but turn your back to the clouds. And D, a roaring lion kills no game. So what do you think? I know we have at least one youngster with us. He said B immediately. <laughs> Me immediately. <laughs> Wonderful. That's what now the Latif and I think as well. On to the next one. Let's skip. Okay, we're gonna. Aha! Uh -huh. This is a particular favorite, and uh, there is a reason for it because uh, the cat is our family cat. And you probably saw him in the background <laughs> <laughs> earlier scratching on the furniture, <laughs> and that's Pippin. So I am going to begin by reading the four. A, those who are at one regarding food are at one in life. Now this could be, I don't think it applies to the cat and the mouse. <laughs> I don't think there are one regarding food. B, beware of time because it has the answers. That's pretty ominous. C, not everyone who chased the zebra caught it but the one who caught the zebra chased it. You have to go after it. And D, when the mouse laughs at the cat, there is a hole nearby. And I, so which one do you think? And here is Pippin. <laughs> which one do you think? Is it A, is it B, is it C, or is it D? When the mouse laughs at the cat, there is a hole nearby. Okay. He said D. <laughs> <laughs> now that that was wonderful to see Pippin because the way that you captured Pippin's coloring is just really, it's extraordinary. Okay. Mm. Okay, next one. All right, what's the next one? Would you like this one or should we move? Let's, see. let's move on a little bit. Okay, let's move on. Next one. Ah, do you like? I, I have to show uh, Jen, Dr. Cole. Let me just show this. Do you see this? This is an, uh, an she, ostrich egg. She has all kinds of props. <laughs> and do you see that? <laughs> that is a regular egg. Wow. You see how much bigger an ostrich egg is to a regular egg? Do you see the ostrich egg? Let me see. I'm the sort of neat up. Yeah. There you go. Anyway, okay, it's all yours, Dr. Cole. Okay, so I'm going to do mine now. Verse A, patience is bitter, but it bears sweet fruit. B, if you wait long enough, even an egg will walk. C, Nobody is born wise. And D, you cannot tell a hungry child you gave her food yesterday. So which one of these four proverbs really captures this illustration? You think it's A? He says A this time. <laughs> so A, patience is bitter but it bears sweet fruit. I love that the young reader with us chose A because I think it does do a good job of illustrating this. And I hope that that young reader is learning to have patience because I remember when I was a kid, patience was probably the last thing that I had a lot of. But I also think there's something in the proverb that says, if you wait long enough, and that's a long time, even an egg will walk. Do, do we have time for two more or? or, or okay, go, oh, I think we're wrapping it up. I think we can do at least two more. We'll be okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, this one here is, is another favorite of mine, and um, 
there are, let, let me go ahead and read the four Proverbs. Don't tell your important secrets to a friend because a friend has other friends. That is very good advice. <laughs> B, if you think you have someone eating out of your hands, it's a good idea to count your fingers, a Nigerian proverb. C, where many are gathered, there is much to be said. And D, good words are food, bad words are poison. And I have to tell you that these birds, these are gray crowned cranes are very sociable birds and they're only found in Africa. And I happened to be in living in Niger at the time and I was sitting outside on, on our veranda and I was reading a book and all of a sudden I heard the sound of fluttering wings and I looked up and there was one of those majestic gray crowned cranes and it had landed right next in the garden near the guava trees and the cashew trees. And it was just unbelievable. And so I always wanted to do something with, it, with that image. So where many are gathered, there is much to be said. That is the answer. Dr. Cole, which one would you like to end with? Would you like me to put the teacher image? Oh, okay. Ooh, what a choice to make to end the power <laughs> the very last. I think let's go to the very last proverb in the book. I love this image. <laughs> oh, so do I. Look at that child. So does this illustration make you choose a child's face is a child's mirror? Or do you choose laughter is a language everyone understands? Is it C that you choose? Happiness is not perfected until it is shared. Or D, it always seems impossible until it is done. Well, I'm going to just say it. Elder Latif and I think that this illustration is wonderfully captured in the words, a child's face is a child's mirror. What a wonderful experience to be here and to share our book. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you both for just being here and sharing the book and sharing your wisdom and all of your special um, props. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Nelda pulled out all kinds of stuff for us to see. I, I love it. <laughs> Uh, well, I'd like to take just a minute um, to, uh, unfortunately, I can't see any kind of feed, so I, I don't have any questions um, available. Do you have a question, Jaden? No. <laughs> he said, I've answered enough of the questions. <laughs> um, but I do want to at least share with our virtual audience the uh, craft. Oh, good. Thank you, Nelda. <laughs> She's so on top what of it. Sure it's sticky. Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> so this is the craft and Miss Nelda, if you'll just explain it to them and we're going to try to have it up on our website and also underneath this, um, this story time uh, presentation when we finally have it up on yeah. YouTube. Ter terrific. This is basically the way I, I, I illustrated my, uh, my proverbs. Uh, there are the four proverbs, and I selected one of them, uh, the one that captured my imagination, and then you have space to put in your vision of, of the proverb. And um, uh, if, if, the, uh, if they'd like, they can also uh, come up with their own proverb, as Dr. Cole said, and uh, illustrate whatever they want. So thank you for being such a great audience.
Thank you so much for coming and thank all of you out there for tuning in. I'm so glad that you came and uh, sat on the virtual story time rug with us today. And for our one participant, we had another one. He had wiggle worms, so <laughs> he didn't make it. But uh, we thank you all for joining in and we want to thank uh, Dr. Cole and also Miss Nelda Latif for joining us this morning and sharing this beautiful book. Don't forget that it is here at Story and Song for purchase and it, it would be a perfect holiday book uh, gift uh, to find under the tree and just even to read just as a family and enjoy these illustrations and talk about the different proverbs and what you guys think. So thank you so much for coming and I will have another story for you next week. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs>